Okay, so I'm back. I'm gonna make this last video to kind of just go over what I did. Um, I try to do it quick because it's about 90 degrees today in Austin, Texas, and uh, I've been out here most of the day in the sun and it's kind of hot and tired. So, um, I said before I went with the 8 gauge power wire, as you can see there, flex tubing all the way around. Goes in, down, in there. Sorry if you can't hear me because the car's running, but I uh, wanted to charge the battery a little. Um, easy trim job around the sides here. Went through the back. Still got to clean up my tools, but if you can see that fuse thing, now you can see what I was doing when I cut that plate and I actually put the label on the, the fuse tap to uh, make it look clean and fit right on there so everything looks good on that end um, put the dash back together uh, one thing about this radio you probably want to know beforehand um, once you hook up the RCA's you actually turn the power off if you hold this button down, it brings up a menu. Most people didn't know that. Somebody said, push the menu button, but if you see there, there's a menu button there, but that's not the right menu button. Um, it's this one. So it gives you an opening, which I was looking at, and you can change it to lettering or something, enter in whatever you want, I guess. I'm not even gonna mess with it. It gives you a car type, Oh, that was sub. Uh, but so you can see, subwoofer control is the RCA's in the back. It was set to off. So I just clicked it on, went back, and then here's the card type. So it'll let you choose uh, TC, XB, XD, IQ, I, and TC for uh, I guess the available models of cars. But once that was done, and I turned it on because I got it all installed and no music was coming out. Um, it came right on. I did uh, zip tie everything down real nice and neat. I'm very finicky like I said about the way things go in, into the car. So I made sure there was flex tubing everywhere that the cable was actually exposed except for under here because it had its own it had its own trim piece and that kind of, but under there on the side of the seat where it goes through is flex tubing. And I'll go to the trunk so y'all can see that. So I got a Terminator, Terminator box, MTX, Terminator sub. There was two, but one of them blown. And so I opted for the kicker comp which I like because um, on traditional subs, you got the edge here is glued. Um, and I know a lot of some speaker subs, especially like uh, the cheap stuff, the Sony Explodes and other brands, uh, that rubber can come off where, they're glued, where it's glued down. But with a kicker sub, you actually get a double stitched after it, after it's glued. I like how they, they stitch their stuff there. But uh, overall, they're basically the same speaker. Uh, Kicker definitely makes a solid speaker, so I probably won't ever have to worry about that one blowing, but that one may go one day. Um, I don't know if you can see. Behind there is an Alpine 300 watt mono channel amp. It's just a bass amp. Um, didn't need a farad capacitor or anything it it but it hits pretty good so um about 150 maybe 200 watts a speaker i don't know i'm not gonna be all geek about it and try to figure out exactly how much output i got going as long as it sounds good and it's installed right and everything's clean uh, we'll do that i'll let you hear it
Well, there you have it. Um, if you have any questions or live in the Austin, Texas metro area and you need help putting your system together or anything, send me a message, email me, uh, leave me a comment on YouTube. Um, and I'll get back to you.